like to volunteer for that, um, please do so. Um, bring them into the, uh, uh, the kitchen during the week. There's a dinner following the Coral Candlelight service next week, sponsored by the PTL, so keep that in mind as well. And today, the German service is this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Pastor Don Hogard is our guest preacher. He speaks German. Um, <laughs> and the Concordia German Singing Society is also uh, the guest choir, so it should be a beautiful service off Deutsch. We still have names of children and homebound members on the Love Comes Down tree in the lounge. So uh, please go down there, pick a name off the tree uh, to help brighten their Christmas. This morning, please join us for coffee and refreshments in the lounge between services and then Sunday school and Bible class. The adult Bible class in the gym is on classic Christmas hymns. Today's hymn is Come Your Hearts and Voices Raising. Pastor Berg will lead uh, the singing of a few Christmas carols before class. He'll have a tip jar on the piano to help pay for the new boiler. <laughs> we figured, let's try and get this thing done. <laughs> the new member class meets in the fellowship hall and the high school youth are, I think, are joining the adults in the gym as well. Join us in the study of God's word. Finally, the midweek Advent service is this Wednesday at 10 a.m. with lunch to follow or 6.30 p.m. with dinner before at 5.30 p.m. Please join us as we uh, gather in the midst of this Advent season to prepare for the coming of our Lord. The service this, this morning is found on the panel of your bulletin. The best way to follow along is to put your bulletin in the back of your hymnal, then simply go to the page indicated. The green sheet is there. Um, it has the intro that we'll be singing. I'll sing the first three lines, I guess, um, and the last ones, and you are invited to join me in singing the rest of the intro. Also, the readings are on this green sheet, notes for today's service, and a devotion for you to be used throughout the week. I believe that's all the announcements I have. I invite you to welcome one another to the Lord's service. The bells will call us to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Let us kneel for confession and absolution. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. of the one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be able to serve you with pure minds. For the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is from Malachi, chapter 3. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings and righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely against those who oppress the hired worker and his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. This is the word of the Lord.
the epistles from Philippians chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Eturia, and Tranconitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Avalon, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall become straight and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruits in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able to raise from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees, Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The crowds asked him, What then shall we do? He answered them, Whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? He said to them, Collect no more than what you are authorized to do. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats, or by false accusations, and be content with your wages. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father
mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is from the Holy Gospel read a few moments ago. Please join me in a word of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. It happens every year about this time. People wanting to stop Christmas. Stores and companies telling you that you can't say Merry Christmas, but Happy Holidays or something other generic than that. Someone tries the Bah Humbug Christmas. This past week, a principal in a school, a public school in Nebraska, sent out a memo to the school families trying to stop Christmas. The principal banned a number of items from the school. The list that she banned included this. Santa, Christmas trees, elf on a shelf, the singing of Christmas carols, the playing of Christmas music, candy canes, reindeer, homemade ornaments, gifts, Christmas movies, and red and green items. Talk about a Scrooge. She got in trouble over that, by the way. <laughs> Regarding candy canes, the notice said this, the shape of a J for Jesus cannot be used in the classroom and will not be tolerated. Her list did approve the following items. Among them, sledding, hot chocolate, polar bears, penguins, snowmen, gingerbread people, Yetis and Olaf, the snowman from Disney's Frozen. Well, this is nothing new. The devil has been trying to stop Christ's mass for centuries. Truth be told, Ebenezer Scrooge, the Grinch, people stealing the infant Jesus from manger scenes, courts forbidding nativity sets in city municipalities cannot stop Christmas. Cancer, divorce, and death cannot stop Christmas. It may seem to you today that the prospects of a Merry Christmas are pretty bleak for whatever reason you have on your heart or your mind this morning. If your house is not decorated, if the tree is not trimmed, if the lights that you put up on your house a couple of weeks ago are starting to burn out and you can't find the short, if the cookies aren't baked, or even if they're burnt. None of that can stop Christmas. Truth be told, Christ's mass cannot be stopped. Nothing in all of creation can stop Christ's mass. Not tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor life, nor death, nor angels, nor powers. Nothing in all of creation can separate God's love in Jesus Christ for you in his birth. The devil and evil men have done all they have could for centuries to stop Jesus' birth. Luke lists eight men who were in power when Christ publicly began his ministry to save us. And all eight of them were pagans. Some of them were nobler than others. But you would be shocked to know that when even the best of them believed and did what they did, you would be shocked. They were utterly horrible politicians and churchmen. Pontius Pilate is the one whom Jesus suffered under, who you probably know the best. Knowing Jesus was innocent, Pilate had Jesus whipped half to death, beaten, ridiculed, crucified. Herod cut off the head of John the Baptist, and he mocked Jesus. The church leaders, Annas and Caiaphas, they lied about Jesus. They had him beaten and ridiculed. They demanded that he be put to death. So what sort of evil stands in the way of your Christmas and mine. Is your Christmas threatened by politics or politicians? 
Is your Christmas threatened by your economic condition or state? Is your Christmas threatened by sickness or even death? Evil men, evil plans, and just plain Satan, the evil one, cannot stop Christmas because God always uses them for his good purposes. All things work together for the good of those who love him, whom he has called according to his purposes. It may look like the evil around you can do nothing but ruin and destroy your Christmas. But consider what the real Christmas was up to the first time Christ came. He had men like Herod and Pilate who would bow to evil if it served their goals. And he had men like Annas and Caiaphas and Philip the Tetrarch who were so evil they had Jesus executed because they were jealous of him. Jealous of a baby? What can God do with that? Well, you know what he did? The blood that Pilate and Herod spattered when they beat and scourged Jesus and nailed him to the cross. They covered all your sins, all of the world's sins. The pain that Annas and Caiaphas gleefully caused for Jesus, they paid for all of your sins, all of them, the world's sins. Those that still mock Jesus today, they paid for them. They did everything they could to stop Jesus from saving the world, but they couldn't. In light of this, do you think that the evil or the pain or the suffering that you may sense this day is going to stop the real Christmas? Oh, it might put a damper on it, on the Christmas spirit that the world knows. But the political, the medical, the financial, or the spiritual evil prowling around us won't devour the real Christmas. It will be a fact on Christmas Day that Christ was born to save you and me and the world from sin, death, and hell. Nothing can stop Christmas. The incredible thing happened on that first birth of Christ. The Word became flesh and blood and dwelt among us. God spoke to a virgin and she conceived the Word in her womb. And it happens today. God speaks and water rebirths you to everlasting life even when you are surrounded by death. God speaks and your pastor's lips send your sins away as far as the east is from the west forever. Even your guilt about not being in a Christmas spirit or denying his word. God speaks and the bread becomes his body and the wine becomes his blood and you have what Mary had in her womb for nine months in you. And if that's not the real Christmas, then nothing is. Nothing can stop Christmas. Not the evil around us, not the suffering or the death, not even our failures in this life. I know when you say I'm not ready for Christmas, you don't mean the real Christmas. You mean the gift giving and the food eating and the family gathering. You can be ready for that Christmas and this is what throws you. Because there isn't any way you can be ready for the real Christmas. The word that John the Baptist proclaimed describes the impossible. Think about it. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways. As those first people heard that, there were no diggers and dump trunks and cranes. As they heard those words, they said, this is impossible. If I must fill in valleys and lower mountains for the Messiah to come, there's no way. We often think we can make Christmas happen too. But too often we're thinking about the gift giving and the food eating and the family gathering around Christmas trees. But that's not the real one. So let's all repent this morning of getting our Christmases confused. There are little things that can get in the way of our fake Christmases. Our lights may not work. 
Our kids may be fighting. The gifts you ordered from Amazon may not arrive on time. And there are real evils that can get in the way of fake Christmases, like sickness, and death, poverty, homelessness, war, racism. But little evils, big evils, can't stop from God becoming flesh. He is Emmanuel, God with us. So that rather than trying to get into a Christmas me mood, whatever that means, pray the collect. Stir up your hearts, stir up our hearts, O oh Lord, and make ready for the Christ. Pray the Psalms. Sing the hymns and the liturgy. Don't ever take these things for granted, for they will sustain you on your dying bed. And teach them to your children. For they will sustain you as you pass through the valley of the shadow of death. So rejoice. He comes to you with salvation, not judgment, not happiness, but salvation. Nothing can stop Christmas. But what if it was stopped? What if Scrooge didn't get the Christmas spirit? What if the Grinch doesn't get, give Christmas back? And the Tivity scenes were all stolen? And the candy canes were forbidden in schools? What if that tree was blasted bare of all of its needles, stripped of its limb, sawn in two pieces and nailed across the other? What would you have then? Then you'd have the real Christmas, the cross. Then you'd have what we have and will have and do have and what you and I need the most, Jesus Christ and him crucified. That brings the real Christmas to you and me. And he brings it to you this morning, wrapped in his body and blood. And that gives you the greatest gift you'll ever get. Forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. A happy Advent in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, who prepared the way of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, by the ministry of John the Baptist, prepare our hearts by repentant faith for Christ's glorious return, joyfully receiving the forgiveness of sins and serving you in willing obedience. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, our King, whose eyes watch over the nations, we pray for those who rule and govern your people in this and every land. Make them faithful in their vocations as rulers and as your servants for justice. Grant your protection to those who serve in the military, and grant your spirit to guide those who minister to them, proclaiming your word of life and salvation. Lead each of us faithfully to serve you by fulfilling our daily vocations and duties in our homes, at work, and school, in your church, and as citizens. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God and Father, your Son revealed his love and his compassion toward the poor and the forgotten, the despised and the lowly. Look with mercy on those who have no work and cannot provide for themselves and their families. Let them find gainful employment so that they can rejoice over the fruits of their labors. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God and Father, you healed the sick and defeated death by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord. According to your gracious will, heal the sick and comfort the suffering, especially Steve living with ALS, Jean and Mark living with pulmonary afflictions, Gina Weber recovering after surgery, Lois Hieronymus who is being treated for a heart issue, Lori Yeager who will have surgery this week, Ray, Joel, Bruce, Bernadette, Sue, Diane, John, Owen, Rosie, Sam, Randy, Tom, and Kristen all in treatment for cancer. Christina, recovering after surgery. 
Roger recovering after surgery. Dennis Knack recovering after surgery. Deanna, who will have surgery this week. Deborah in treatment for an autoimmune disease. Tom recovering after a heart procedure. Jan recovering after knee surgery. And Mary Fors and Richard Berg, who are now both in hospice care. Assure them that nothing can stop Christmas. Nothing can stop your gift of life and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God and Father, fill us with your spirit that our love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, that discerning what is best, we may be pure and blameless until the day of Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, as you gave yourself for the forgiveness of sins, grant that we may receive your body and blood with sincere faith in your word and promises so that we commune with glad confidence for our soul's well-being. Lord, in your mercy. Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the offering and also for the signing of the Friendship Register, which will be in the middle aisle. Just pass it along and sign it if you will. That would be wonderful. Salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty 
everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your boundless mercy you sent your servant, John the Baptist, to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts we pray, come Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood given us to eat and drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.